Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm really sorry for the tardiness today. Um, I got two very brief things, then we'll, we'll dive into your questions. Uh, on March 31st, President Biden released the first ever presidential proclamation recognizing April as National Arab American Heritage Month. The secretary echoed the president releasing a statement on April 1st, recognizing and celebrating the vast contributions Arab Americans have made in the United States, including right here at the Department of State. From writing the very words that come from this podium to ensuring life-saving humanitarian aid is delivered to those in need to developing policy on our most dif difficult problem sets and implementing that policy overseas. I want to personally thank all Americans of Arab who have dedicated their lives to public service and recognize the contributions they have made to our national security and protecting their fellow Americans abroad. The U.S.'s unique diversity is our greatest strength. We mark National Arab American Heritage Month to honor and celebrate those contributions here and all over our country. Uh, secondly, tomorrow will mark one year since Russian pro-democracy activist and politician Vladimir Karamurza was arrested in Moscow. Russian authorities charged Mr. Karamurza with multiple offenses stemming from his exercise of freedoms of expression and association. We are deeply concerned by reports his health has deteriorated in detention, and we urge Russian authorities to ensure he receives all appropriate medical attention. As this trial is set to conclude in the coming days, we again call for the Russian government to att uh, end the politically motivated prosecution of Mr. Karamurza, and we will continue to follow his case very closely. Uh, and with that, um, Matt, if you want to start us off. To the uh, happy Easter Monday. Um, so let's just start with the, uh, I don't expect that you're going to have a lot to say, but uh, let's just start with all these documents that are floating around out in the ether in the internet. Sure, Matt. So, uh, um, uh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. Well, I'll, I'll just stop right question. there. No, go, go ahead. Go, I, you, you, go ahead. You offered a natural pause, so I know well, I have a tendency yeah, to feel. Well, go ahead. Why don't I let you finish your question well, before I dive I mean, in? What, what does the State Department have to say about them? Um, you know, have you had any uh, uh, issues with uh, friends, allies, partners uh, related uh, to these uh, revelations? Let me say uh, a couple of things, Matt, and you, uh, many of you probably just heard my colleague um, Chris Marr speak to this uh, at the Pentagon, uh, but after learning about the leak, the Department of Defense quickly referred the matter to the Department of Justice, which has opened a criminal investigation. The Pentagon has said they have taken steps to further restrict access to sensitive information, and an interagency effort has been initiated to review the national security implications of the disclosure and to mitigate uh, this impact of the release of these documents that could have on U.S. national security, uh, as well as the impact that it could have on our allies and partners. Broadly, what I would say, uh, Matt, is that U.S. officials uh, uh, across the interagency are engaging with allies and partners at high levels over this, including to reassure them of our commitment to safeguarding intelligence and uh, the fidelity of securing our partnerships as well. But I don't have any other uh, specifics to, to get into. Well, how's that going, the assuring your allies and Again, Matt, I'm, I'm, you sh your it should be no surprise to you that I'm not going to uh, get into the specifics of uh, private diplomatic conversations uh, from up here. Okay. Well, is it, is, it, is it the case that the State Department is not aware that any of its own documents have uh, been compromised. So, Matt, I'm just not going to get into uh, the, the the specifics of, specifics of this beyond saying what you've heard others across the interagency say, which is that the Department of the Defense and the intelligence community are reviewing and assessing the validity of these documents. Uh, there is no question, of course, that they present a risk to uh, national security, but uh, I'm just not going to g get into specifics right. beyond well, that. Just if they do present a risk to national security, then that suggests that they are legit, right? Matt, or, uh, as I've said, the work is ongoing right now. Because otherwise, I could write something down on a piece of yellow paper and say whatever, and then give it to whoever, and they could put it out there. That you is, wouldn't say that was a that risk That is why the important right? work is ongoing right now, to review and assess the validity of those documents. Well, but you just said that, I think, let me go back and look, and you just said that they do present a risk to national security. 
So if you have determined that they do present a risk to national security, then they must be, by inference, legit. No? Matt, without getting too much into a philosophical conversation about what could be a threat to national security or not. And they were just made up by someone, then they wouldn't be a risk, right? I think fake information being out there can, of course, still be a threat to national security. Right. But what I will say right. broadly and leave it at is that the Department of Defense and intelligence community are working to review and assess the uh, validity of these documents. Kylie. Um, so when you talk about communicating with allies um, to reiterate commitment to safeguarding intelligence, which allies have you had those conversations with thus far? I'm just not going to get into the specifics of, of those conversations or read them out, but that work is ongoing, and we are engaging with allies and partners uh, over this. And are those proactive conversations and such that you're going to the countries that were mentioned in these documents, or is this in response to them reaching out to you with concerns about um, this information being I, in the public. I'm not going to parse it more specifically than that these engagements are ongoing. They're happening across the interagency. They're happening at the highest levels, uh, and we're doing so with our allies and partners. So, hold on, just, so they're happening across the interagency. So is state taking the lead on those conversations, or is DOD having conversations, states having conversations, the White House is having conversations? Well, Can you just as the uh, main uh, diplomatic branch and agency of this administration, of course, the Department of State uh, would have a role in uh, communicating with our allies and partners. Uh, but uh, these conversations are happening uh, across the administration. U.S. officials are engaging with allies and partners at the highest level over this. And just one last question. Mm -hmm. um, is, has this department implemented any measures to restrict access to classified information that's in this building as a result of this leak. For example, you know, are officials who could print out classified documents in this building still allowed to do so? Kylie, I just wouldn't get into the specifics of uh, operational uh, security uh, uh, decisions uh, regardless of, of, of the circumstance and what rules and policies are in place. What I would say is that we take the uh, security of uh, our intelligence and classified documents very seriously. Uh, and of course, as I said at the top of this, there is an interagency uh, effort that's been initiated to review uh, the, uh, the implications, but uh, I'm just not going to get into any policy changes that have uh, happened or not happened as it relates to this. Uh, Jenny, go ahead. I'll come back to you, Alex. Jenny, go ahead. Issues. Sure. The US, in, US intelligence agency wiretaped South Korea's foreign affairs and the national security line. If this is true, how do you see the impact on the US and South Korea relationship? Well, Jenny, what I would uh, start with by saying is that our commitment to the Republic of Korea is ironclad. Uh, but broadly, as I told Kylie, uh, U.S. officials are uh, engaging uh, with high levels with our allies and partners over this to reassure them uh, as it relates to our commitment to safeguard uh, intelligence and sensitive documents, as well as uh, uh, c uh, ensuring our commitment to the security of the partnerships that we have with these countries. Do you think uh, that Russia was involved in the leak of this secret document? I'm just, it would be uh, <laughs> of most inappropriate of me to um, uh, offer any assessment on cause or source or anything like that. What I will just reiterate is what I said at the beginning of this is that the Department of Defense uh, uh, quickly moved into action. They have referred the matter to the Department of Justice for an investigation, um, and I will let uh, the Pentagon and the DOJ speak more specifically about that process. Alex, go ahead. To clarify for you, for uh, the fact that it was referred to the DOJ, does that suggest that you have no uh, question about the authenticity of the documents? Uh, Alex, I am not going to uh, be prescriptive beyond what I uh, said to Matt, which is that the Department of Defense and the intelligence community is uh, uh, hard at work uh, assessing and reviewing the validity uh, of these documents, um, and I'm not going to get into any other specifics beyond that. I also, you're not in a position to deny that the Kremlin was behind this leak. Right. I'm not in a position to uh, deny or confirm anything beyond what I said, as there is an investigation and process that is ongoing. And also, how much of your assessment also covers that? Uh, uh, how will this leak uh, impact the trajectory of the war? Because we talk about an ongoing 
operation. Are you talking about the, the trajectory of the war in Ukraine? Um, look, I will let our Ukrainian partners speak to uh, the decisions that they're making as it relates uh, to the battlefield and their any posture or planning um, that they uh, are undertaking. What I would say broadly, and you've uh, this is nothing new, is that uh, we're going to continue to support Ukraine in the wake of Russia's brutal uh, aggression for uh, as long as it takes, and that uh, continues to be the case. But I'm not going to get into anything beyond that. Uh, on the same topic? The same Go ahead, Daphne. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Israel has rejected claims raised in the documents that leaders of Mossad had supported nationwide protests against a proposed overhaul of Israel's judiciary. Have you had conversations with your Israeli counterparts on this, and are you concerned more broadly that this leak might affect your relationship with Israel at a time when tensions between Israel and Palestinian groups are have sharply increased? Let me say uh, a couple things to that. First, um, uh, our partnership with Israel is deep. Um, uh, it is an important partnership that we have uh, with Israel. Uh, but broadly, uh, what I will say is that I'm not going to read out uh, private discussions that are taking place between the United States and our allies and partners uh, beyond just saying that they are happening at the highest levels and we are working uh, to communicate uh, when we can. These, this document leak might have an impact on your relationship. Uh, again, our commitment to Israel is ironclad. Our commitment to Israel's security is ironclad. And we speak often uh, with our Israeli partners. And uh, you hear this administration writ large talk about the deep relationship uh, that we have with our Israeli partners. Thanks. Camilla. Um, is this department playing any active role in assessing any Russian disinformation coming off the back of these? documents. Uh, again, Camilla, uh, while the uh, important work is being done to assess the validity and veracity of these documents, I'm just not going to get into the specifics beyond that. What I will say is that, of course, broadly, when it, anywhere disinformation uh, and misinformation happens around the world, uh, we are paying close attention. Uh, and where possible, we uh, try and take steps to uh, ensure that uh, disinformation uh, and misinformation does not spread. But again, I'm just not going to get into specifics as it relates to this. Shannon, I'm sorry, Leon. I know you've had your hand change up patiently. Your story, I'll come back to you after. Shannon, go ahead. So. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the French president's comments yeah. over the weekend. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Well, I'll start. Well, you have a very we, smart follow-up. Before we, before we jump into that, does anybody else have anything on this before we move away to the on the topic we were talking about before? About the topic I got here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then I promise I'll come back to you guys. I have a couple questions. Um, so with the leak of the classified doc documents, South Korean criticism of excessive U.S. intelligence activities against allies is a big issue right now. And I was wondering what the U.S.'s response to those criticisms is. Uh, well, you just, uh, I think, heard me speak to this a little bit to Janie's question. But since you've asked, I will reiterate again that, one, our commitment uh, to the ROK is ironclad. They are uh, one of our most important partners in the region. Uh, we have a number of shared values uh, with the Republic of Korea, uh, and uh, a big piece of that is our shared vision of not just a rules-based, free and open Indo-Pacific, but having that rules-based order uh, apply to the world broadly. Uh, the Secretary, uh, Secretary Blinken has had the opportunity to engage uh, with his counterpart, uh, the Republic of Korea's foreign minister, on a number of occasions, including as recently uh, as um, uh, the month prior at the Munich Security Conference. Uh, this is a deep partnership that we have, uh, mm -hmm. and it is one that uh, is enduring. Uh, but again, broadly, as I said, there are conversations ongoing. We are engaging with our allies and partners uh, on this subject, um, but I just don't have anything other uh, specific to add. Um, and following off of that, um, South Korean president will be making a visit in about two weeks. Do you think the leak of the classified documents will affect any the event itself? Uh, again, I, I, we have a very deep uh, relationship and partnership with the Republic of Korea. I know that uh, President Biden and Secretary Blinken and the First Lady are looking forward to hosting um, our South Korean counterparts and partners uh, over the course of the state visit. Uh, I will let the White House and the National Security Council speak to any specific schedule or programming, uh, but it's something that we're very much looking forward to as an administration. Uh, and again, our uh, commitment to the ROK is, is, is ironclad. Anything else on this topic before we pivot back to Shannon and Leon, who've had their hands up patiently? All right, go ahead. Thank you. So the President of France was quoted in two publications over the weekend as saying that Europe should pursue a different strategy on Taiwan from Washington. I just wanted to know if the State Department has a response to that, especially given 
through the last couple meetings now with European allies, the U.S. has touted um, a strong strategic alliance against China. L let me say a couple things. First, the foundation of uh, the transatlantic relationship is our shared commitment to democratic principles, uh, the rule of law, the respect for human rights, and an international rules-based order. And France is uh, our oldest ally, and these shared values have been the North Star of our partnership and continue to guide us today, including both of our countries' joint approach in supporting Ukraine. Uh, this is also the case in terms of the broad concern related to the PRC and its coercive economic practices, its threatening behavior towards Taiwan, and its human rights abuses, and the risk of deepening or creating new economic dependencies. Uh, the secretary just returned from a NATO foreign minister's ministerial where there was an uh, entire session on the uh, uh, role that the Indo-Pacific plays. And that's because NATO has recognized the PRC's stated ambitions and policies. They challenge our interests, they challenge our security, and they challenge our values. And allies, including France, have committed to work together to address these systemic challenges. Uh, as you likely know, Shannon, uh, EU President von der Leyen has also been uh, part of these uh, travels to Beijing, and the EU itself has described the PRC as a systemic rival and strategic competitor, um, in addition to being a partner. Uh, as I said, President von der Leyen outlined in her speech in March that the PRC poses risks to European economic and national security. Uh, the United States and the EU remain concerned regarding the PRC's support of the, Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Uh, but broadly, what I would just ultimately say again is that um, countries uh, have their own sovereign decisions and have their own sovereign decisions to make as it relates to any bilateral relationship that they hold. Our viewpoint uh, will always be what can we accomplish bilaterally and multilaterally with countries where partnership with the United States uh, is at its center. And I think uh, through the partnership between the United States and France and the partnership between the United States and the EU, uh, we have done a lot of important uh, great work, uh, including supporting our Ukrainian partners in the face of Russian aggression. And I think that work is uh, going to continue uh, to move forward as we continue uh, to work collaboratively to deal with um, the, the, the growing role that the PRC plays as well. Leon, go ahead. Uh, I, I guess the, the follow-up <laughs> is a must. You don't really answer the question in the sense that you, 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 you don't qualify or characterize uh, President Macron's comments. Um, do you find them helpful, unhelpful? Um, and, and also, I mean, this is against the backdrop of the Chinese maneuvers uh, off of Taiwan, which are finishing today, mm -hmm. which are fairly, fairly important. And, um, and uh, the, the France is basically saying that the, U the U Europeans in general should not get caught in this sort of block or logic of blocks uh, between China and the US or tit for tat between China and the US and have their own autonomous uh, strategy. So uh, how, do you, how does that fit in? Well, let me say a couple of things. I think, again, uh, these uh, countries will, uh, countries that have their own sovereign uh, autonomy. Uh, they have their own right to um, have bilateral relationships. They have their own right to comment on uh, these bilateral relationships. Uh, but uh, what I know is that uh, the United States and France's partnership is deep. They are our oldest allies. Uh, we have countless shared values, uh, and they have immense, been immense partners uh, in both uh, holding Russia accountable for its aggression into Ukraine. They have been uh, immense partners in uh, our work to address the challenges posed by the PRC. Uh, they have been, uh, of course, helpful in the EU context, but also through NATO and through these other fora as well. Uh, specifically on the actions that you so referred to, Leon, uh, we are, of course, closely monitoring those actions. And uh, actions like these, they undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, uh, which we continue to believe, and it is a viewpoint that we know our French allies share, uh, is critical to global prosperity. And as we have said before, you heard me say this on Thursday, there is no reason for the PRC to turn uh, a, a, a transit which held precedent uh, as in con as con which is consistent with U.S. long-standing policy into something that it's not. Yes, but then, you, you've been saying there's no reason uh, for them to, but they did. <laughs> they sent out ships and everything, so you can't come you know, uh, 
week later after the fact and say there's no reason for them to. They did it. So. Well, there is no reason for them to. I understand that they did it. And as I said, we are closely monitoring uh, uh, Beijing's actions. But also broadly, uh, in keeping with the, our, uh, our, our belief that we won't be deterred from operating safely and responsibly in the seas and the skies of the Western Pacific, consistent with international law, uh, in keeping with that, the Nimitz Carrier Strike Group and a Marine Amphibious Readiness Group are conducting routine operations uh, in the Philippine Sea and will remain in that region. Uh, and I will say again uh, that there is no reason to turn this transit into something that it was not. Uh, anything else on this before well, we? Let's talk about the French for a second. OK. Immense uh, partnership. Yes, it is true that France is your is, is the oldest US ally. But it's not exactly like you haven't had disagreements, very serious disagreements. Of course we have, the, Matt. We had uh, disagreements with uh, many of our allies and partners. That have, that have, like, you know, caused severe disruption in relations. AUKUS being the most recent one. Uh, the war in Iraq. Do you have a well, question, or are you well, just trying no, to get a history well, lesson? Are you saying all of that is forgiven? All of that is is done, over with, and I what I'm saying is that is what I what I'm saying about our French allies, and which is what I would say about any ally and partner that we have, is that of course there are areas in which we disagree, uh, but that does not take away from the deep partnership that we have and what we have accomplished through the bilateral relationship with that country. And that is especially true uh, with our French allies. So are you, are you, sorry, just to follow up on this, are you concerned at all that Europeans might not be so much in, f in favor of defending Taiwan if that were to be the case? Uh, uh, in Leon. the sense that the, the defense relationship obviously is not the same and the interests are not Leon, the same. I, I, I would point you no further than President von der Leyen's speech just uh, a number of weeks ago where she talked about uh, the PRC as a national and economic security threat uh, for all of Europe. Uh, and so on a lot of these issues as it relates to dealing with the complex challenges posed by the PRC, there is immense convergence between us uh, and our European allies and partners in how we tackle that uh, challenge head on. And there's also a number of fora in which we can do that through the European Union, through NATO, through other mechanisms. Anything else on this before we pivot away? Saeed's patiently had his hand up. All right, Saeed, go ahead. Thank you, Ridan. A couple of things on the Palestinian-Israeli issue. Uh, last Thursday, the United States blocked a statement, or a potential statement, by the United Nations Security Council condemning the storming of Al-Aqsa Mosque. And my question to you, why would the United States condemn the storming of any place of worship? Said, we have uh, always said that, uh, as it relates to uh, the holy sites in Jerusalem, that we believe that it's important of upholding the historic status quo in uh, in practice. We also have long said that we believe that uh, uh, people should be able to practice their religion and faith uh, without any, uh, any hindrance. Uh, but we've also uh, previously said, Said, and you're not hearing me say anything new, that uh, discussing these uh, issues and uh, lit litigating these issues through uh, the UN is not uh, productive. It further incites tensions and takes us away from uh, a, a two-state solution and uh, takes us away from uh, what we believe is important, which is maintaining the status quo. You know, that statement would have just said, we condemn the storming of the, mo the mosque while people were worshiping. I'm sure that the United States of America and many other countries would have probably done the same thing if, let's say, the Chinese attacked the mosque that where the Uyghurs are. Sa Said, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals, but we have uh, spoken clearly and firmly about uh, uh, any concern of, uh, of of changing the status quo as it relates to the historic holy sites in Jerusalem, uh, and we have continued to call for constraint, coordination, and calm as well. Uh, let me ask you, today there was a march by thousands of settlers into Ebitar, protected by the Israeli army, who attacked the press with tear gas, they attacked Palestinians that were protesting and so on. And this seems to be happening day in and day out. And by the way, the Palestinian children going to school had to take, had to take the, you know, the hills, the rocky hills, so they can go to their schools. They couldn't 
rock was a set that were rocky. So I, I want you to tell me what is your position on this particular incident, if you're aware of it. Said, uh, we have made our views clear, and that is that I, I it is critical. On this march, you know, that has been protected by the Israeli army, you know, and, and all the trimmings. So it is critical for Israel and the Palestinian Authority to refrain from unilateral steps that incite tensions, that undercut efforts to advance a negotiated two-state solution. And that, uh, of course, includes annexation of territory, evictions, demolitions, violence against civilians, violence against journalists, uh, incitement to violence, uh, and things of that nature. So I, we've spoken about this before. To, on, uh, you know, the, the creation of a new National Guard in Israel, and the possible, I mean, this is what's, what was published this today, that uh, an Israeli officer Avinom Imuna, well known for you know, giving orders to shoot and kill Palestinians at sight and so on, will head that group. Are you concerned? Even even the former Israeli uh, Prime Minister, Ehud Barak, who was you know, a general in his own right, so to speak, uh, warned against such a thing. Do you have a position on that? So these, um, these are all hypotheticals, and uh, we're aware of these reports about potential candidates, but uh, I'm not going to comment on hypotheticals, and I would refer you to the government of Israel to speak uh, more specifically about this. Broadly, what I will say is that we've always emphasized to call uh, on uh, to, to call on those to refrain from actions, including rhetoric, that could inflame tensions. Um, I'll just, I'll just go ahead. Yeah, we just said going to the United Nations is unproductive. Are you saying that uh, the Security Council in this conflict is irrelevant? And if so, why? I'm not saying uh, it is irrelevant. What I'm saying is that the, this is a uh, an issue and a topic uh, that uh, needs to be decided and determined and discussed between the Israelis and the Palestinian Authority. And that is exactly why uh, almost every day questions as it relates to this re region that have come up, I have, I and others from this department have spoken firmly about our viewpoint being the desire for a negotiated two-state solution, uh, and that being the mechanism. Uh, and so uh, the, I just don't have anything else to offer on that. Can you, can, can, can I just, sorry, can, on um, Russia and Evinger, sure. Kovic, can are there any updates there? Have you guys gotten consular access? Have you been given any new information from the Russians about him? So uh, thanks for your question, Matt. Uh, what I can say is that we are still continuing to seek uh, consular access. Uh, at this point, it is a violation of Russia's obligations uh, um, under our consular convention and uh, a violation in, uh, against international law. We have stressed the need for the Russian government to provide this access as soon as possible. What is the consequence for the violation? Is there, uh, you know, is there any? Well, Matt, as you know, between our two countries, uh, between any country no, that I we just have. Mean in general, I mean, say they violate. You, you just accuse them of violating the agreement on consular access. So, w what do you do? Well, this is something that we're continuing to raise with them. Uh, it is a violation. Uh, we believe that um, it, it is a, a matter of human dignity uh, to ensure that um, uh, Mr. Gershkovitz can, can meet with consular officers. What do you do? Do you have any recourse at all? We have a number of tools at our disposal, Matt, to hold the, the Russian Federation accountable broadly, obviously. But again, this is a uh, consular issue that we are working through appropriate channels. And, and, okay. and then on the wrongful detention um, determination, that's still a work in progress? I think you heard uh, the Secretary quite clearly uh, in Brussels. Yeah. Uh, and so that uh, work is a deliberative process that's ongoing. Uh, and I don't have any updates for you uh, on that right now. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to, you've had, I've gotten a couple of questions already, Alex, go ahead. I think you asked a couple of mine as well, but I um, just wanted to get the, the state response, the State Department's reaction to state media reporting that Gershkovich has been officially charged with espionage. Um, I know that information is limited, but if you could just respond to that officially happening. Well, um, uh, I, I would point you no further than what, the, the again, the Secretary said in Brussels and what I and others across the Energy Agency have spoken about as well. Uh, these uh, charges, um, it's hard that, it's hard for 
any of them to have veracity. Uh, and again, um, Secretary Blinken had the opportunity to raise uh, this detention with Foreign Minister Lavrov this past last weekend, if I'm doing my math correctly, uh, and he. Uh, underlined the United States' grave concern of not just these charges, but the de detention, uh, and called for his release immediately. I know, I know that you are still working on consular access, but in terms of the formal communication between the MFA and the embassy about even just a notice of arrest, that hasn't happened yet. So that, that has, that happened, uh, I believe, over uh, the this past uh, weekend in which uh, the, the ministry did provide a notification of detention, but they have still not granted consular access, and as I said, uh, this is a uh, violation uh, uh, against the obligations we have within our consular convention with Russia. Do you have any indication as to why it's taken this long, like why they still haven't granted it, it seems for, for, for consular access, yes. that's a question for the Russians. Uh, we've been calling for consular access um, since the very first day, as we do with any American citizen who is uh, detained abroad. The, our, 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 our call is for American citizens to be granted um, uh, consular access uh, so that uh, our officials can uh, check in on them and ensure their well-being. Oh, sorry, just one final yeah. one. Um, well, I know that in previous briefings, you've said that the State Department stance is that all Americans should leave Russia, whether you're a reporter or what have you. Has the State Department been in touch with any American reporters in Russia about trying to get out, of advising them to get out, what protections are due, due to privacy considerations, I'm just not going to, in a place to speak to any specific conversations, but you are correct. Uh, the travel warning for the Russian Federation is a level four, which is do not travel. And our message continues to be to any American citizen in the Russian Federation to leave immediately and that our embassy in Moscow can, um, uh, can assist uh, should you need assistance to do so. Go ahead, put your hand up. So, so following DW's uh, I'll come back to you, uh, investigation that members of the Bengali government uh, may be involved in the torture and killers, uh, killings of RAB, we've been talking here about that. How will you uh, proceed with the sanction imposed on RAB in December 2021 for serious human rights violations? Uh, I'm not going to uh, get into uh, the specifics of any uh, new actions or designations that the U.S. government may take, but I, what I will say broadly is that, uh, and you heard me speak to this on Thursday, we will examine the allegations in this article and video carefully, uh, and our uh, immense hope is that the Bangladeshi government do the same. Uh, perpetrators of any human rights abuses should be held accountable. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I'd like to go back, if you like, to last week, last Friday. Um, it's been confirmed that three U.S. military personnel were traveling with the SDF's Muslim Kobane in northern Iraq on Friday. Uh, this was confirmed by uh, the CENTCOM. Uh, my question is going to be, uh, is the United States now putting American lives at risk and providing round-the-clock uh, personal protection to uh, Muslim Abdi, wherever he may go? Because we all know that this uh, man comes from the ranks of an organization that's on your list of FTOs. Uh, I'm not familiar with this case, so I'm going to have to uh, check on, uh, check uh, w with our team and get back to you. Obviously, for any uh, comment about force posture or the positioning of American troops, I'd refer you to our Pentagon colleagues. Uh, do you know anything, any information as the State Department that Muslim of these dealings in northern Iraq or northern Syria, wherever it may be, that the United States is actually providing some sort of, you know, security guarantees so that he can travel safely. I, I just, I don't have anything to offer on that, but I'm happy to check and see if we can have anything to say. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Uh, Secretary of State just having meeting with the visiting Bangladesh foreign minister in this building right now. Mm -hmm. But when he is in town, the prime minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, has launched a ferocious verbal attack on the U.S., questioning U.S. democracy, human rights, and uh, blaming them for the regime change. And her son, an ICT advisor to the prime minister, has said U.S. State Department, nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. So do you comment on that? And just I'll supplement another mm -hmm. with my colleague that uh, you, you are urging uh, investigation. Uh, you, you are thoroughly in, uh, examined, and you urge Bangladesh government to investigate the National News and DW report. But Bangladesh government is examining other way around. They arrested already one of the witnesses in Bangladesh. So they examine other way. So what is your comment on that? And daily largest Bengali, highest largest Bengali daily newspaper, Prathamalo, today 
a bunch of group of people, you know, breach the security and they're looking for the editor, you know, they want to harm. So what yeah. is your comment on three of my questions? Let me see. Let me, let me try and un un unpack that. First, um, as it relates to the prime minister comments, uh, look, um, the latest World Freedom, uh, World Press Freedom Index ranked Bangladesh uh, 162 out of 180 countries, a drop of 10 places from the previous year. And one of the biggest reasons uh, that Bangladesh scored that, and you have asked about this question previously, is the Digital Security Act, which uh, uh, per our assessment is one of the world's most draconian laws uh, for journalists. And we have made our concerns about uh, this law uh, quite clear. Uh, a free press and an informed citizenry are key for any nation and its democratic future. And we are concerned uh, that media and content restrictions uh, and the uh, impact that they might have. Um, look, broadly, uh, I'm not going to, I, I don't have any new or different comments to offer uh, about uh, the, your second question that you ask, I would reiterate that any uh, abusers of human rights uh, should uh, be held accountable. And we, uh, it's our immense hope that the Bangladeshi government uh, does look in uh, to the contents of this article uh, and video. Go ahead. Yeah, regarding Bangladesh, uh, the main opposition party, Bang uh, BNP, they are uh, demanding for a category government, government during our uh, election, upcoming election, however, the uh, current ruling party. And they, and they are saying, and they are read on their stance to hold the election under the current uh, constitution, which is which has uh, already uh, uh, abolished the category government system. On that, in that situation, what is, will be the U.S. stance regarding our upcoming election? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your question. What was your question? The main uh, main opposition party, BNP, they are demanding for a category government system uh, in the in our uh, for our uh, election. Uh, Time, but the current ruling party, uh, they are rigid on their stance uh, to hold the election under the current uh, constitution. The constitu constitution has abolished the category government system. Okay. On that situation, what will be the U.S. Stance? So let, let me say um, two things. First is that. Uh, we uh, uh, want to and are looking forward to deepening uh, our relationship with uh, Bangladesh. That's why Secretary Blinken um, is meeting, had the opportunity to meet with uh, Bangladesh's foreign, foreign minister today. Uh, but broadly, the U.S. supports the uh, principle of free and fair elections in Bangladesh and around the world, but uh, I'm not here to endorse one political candidate or uh, party versus another. Uh, we, uh, again, are looking forward to deepening our relationship with Bangladesh uh, as a whole. Is the Secretary of State, or did he uh, kind of mention uh, uh, the investigation when he met? Uh, uh, I, I don't want to get ahead of any formal readout that we put out, which we'll putting, be putting out one later today, I'm sure. Dylan, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, back on China for one second. Sure. Um, it's been now two months, well, about two months and a week since the Secretary canceled or postponed, as you guys have said, uh, his trip to China um, since the balloon incident and everything that followed. Are you any closer now than you uh, were previously to rescheduling that trip? As you heard me say on Thursday, Dylan, to one of your colleagues' questions, is again, we uh, have and intend to continue to keep lines of communications open with the PRC, uh, and we look forward to rescheduling the Secretary's trip when conditions allow. You guys have said that it was postponed. Uh, go on your way to say it's postponed, not canceled. Uh, at what point? Does it become canceled, not postponed? If it's not rescheduled, how many more months until that it's is uh, hypothetical? I'm not going to engage in Dylan uh, again. The the our our you have heard me say you've heard the secretary say that uh, we intend to uh, reschedule this trip when uh, conditions allow. Uh, go ahead in the back. Very in the vicinity of Slimania Airport. Yeah, you are aware of that yes. strike. Okay. There are some reports saying that the strike carried out by Turkey. Uh, can you confirm that the drone was Turkish? If not, who does the U.S. believe carried out the strike? So let me say a couple things, and my colleagues at the Pentagon can speak to some of these uh, more specifics. Uh, our Department of Defense is investigating the attack on the convoy on April 7th. That convoy included U.S. military personnel. We can confirm that there were no casualties, and we, of course, uh, forcefully oppose any action that threatens the safety and security of U.S. personnel. U.S. forces remain in Iraq and Syria in support of local partners to achieve uh, the enduring defeat of ISIS, the degradation of ISIS in the region 
uh, continues to be uh, an important priority of ours. Uh, and broadly, uh, I'm going to defer to the DOD and their investigation uh, uh, before speaking to any source or origination. Uh, what I will just reaffirm is that any action in Iraq should respect Iraqi sovereignty and territorial integrity. And we encourage governments to work together to de-conflict cross-border military operations. Has the, US, has the U.S. spoke with Turkey or someone? I'm just not going to get ahead of uh, the DOD's uh, investigation. Can I ask something? Can I ask the question? You said that you didn't know what happened on Friday in Northern Iraq. Right. No, you just provided the statement. Well, it seems not yet. I didn't, I didn't understand that's what you were asking about. Yeah, I thought you were asking, asking about... You know, the three U.S. military personnel were traveling with uh, Muslim Abdi. Can you confirm that? Un under they, un they were in the convoy together. Un understood. I did not realize that that's what you were speaking to. So uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of um, uh, beyond what I just said. I would refer you to the... Uh, I, I would refer you to the Pentagon to speak more specifically what I can just say is that the convoy included U.S. military personnel and that there are no casualties. You know why the U.S. military personnel were there, specifically? Again, that is a question for our colleagues at the Department of Defense. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Can you follow question on China? As you mentioned, the U.S. has tried to maintain the lines of communication open with China and tried to reschedule Secretary Blinken's trip to yep. China. But after the speaker's meeting with Taiwanese President Tsai, China reacted harshly, including military drills around Taiwan. So how much are you worried about the impact of Chinese reactions on the U.S.-China relations? Well, let me say a couple things. First and foremost, on any Chinese reaction, what I would say, and you heard me say this to Leon, is that uh, transits by uh, Taiwanese officials have uh, they are consistent with U.S. longstanding policy. They are consistent with our chi One China policy. They are consistent with uh, uh, the assurances and the communiques as well that govern our One China policy as well as the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, broadly, as it speaks to Congress, uh, Congress is a separate uh, and co-equal branch of government that is going to make its own decisions, and I would let the speaker or any member of Congress speak specifically to their engagements. Uh, we continue to hold hold firm that uh, we will reschedule the Secretary's trip when conditions allow. Uh, and again, any reaction from the PRC, uh, it is not necessary to make something out of this transit uh, that it's not. Go ahead. Does the Department have aware of violent attacks on the Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Church parishes taking place now? Uh, I'm not aware of these uh, specific reports. Uh, can you expand a little bit? Last week alone, there were like dozens of attacks on, on church and, and church goers in Ukraine. People were capturing churches in Ukraine. Have you heard anything about it? Uh, again, I, I, I haven't seen those reports, so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't speak to them, but we're happy to, to, to check and, and get back to you. I have one more question. Sure. In February, Under Secretary Jenkins said that the United States will finish the destruction of its chemical weapons arsenal, at least in, in spring. Is they are still on track to do that? Uh, I believe we are. I've not uh, seen any indication that's uh, not the case, but I'm happy to see if we have any specific updates to offer. Daphne. Uh, on Ethiopia, yeah. Palestinians have protested across Amhara since the federal government decided to disband regional special forces units, and two Catholic Relief Service workers were shot and killed in the region on Sunday amid the protests. Are you concerned about this order from the uh, Ethiopian government and resulting pushback, or is this a move you support? Uh, I'm going to have to check on the specifics of that, Daphne. Uh, I was not aware of that before coming out, but uh, what I would say broadly is that uh, we believe it is important for uh, parties in Ethiopia to make progress and take steps towards the implementation of uh, the November cessation of hostilities, including, of course, the formation of the uh, interim Tigray regional government, uh, as well as the withdrawal of air train forces and the concurrent TPLF disarmament, but I'm happy to check if we have more specifics. Camilla? Um, the secretary is is accompanying the president to UK and Ireland, i.e. Northern Ireland. There was some limited uh, violence in the streets of Derry. Um, are you, do you have anything to say about uh, 
uh, any concern ahead of their visit, there being any more unrest in the in the region for the president and secretary visit? I, I don't have any uh, on the ground or uh, uh, assessment to offer. Obviously, if you, this is uh, relating to uh, any potential American citizens traveling to the region, we have uh, uh, travel advisories uh, specifically both to um, Ireland and the United Kingdom. I would uh, point individuals there, but um, uh, the the president is going to travel to Belfast, Northern Ireland, to mark the tremendous progress since the signing of the uh, Belfast Good Friday Agreement 25 years ago, and to, of course, uh, underscore support uh, 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 of the U.S. to support Northern Ireland's vast economic potential. And then uh, after that, he will be in Ireland, and he will discuss with our close cooperation on a range of, of shared global challenges as well. Uh, Gita? Thank you, um, On Yemen. Uh, Saudi officials were in um, in Yemen yesterday talking about um, uh, the ceasefire and making it permanent, finishing, finalizing the end of the war. Is the United States involved, although the Omanis are mediating, is the United States involved at all in any shape or form? And if not, um, is the Biden administration being briefed on, on, on where it's going, what's happening? and? Um, how do you see the likelihood of the war really ending? Uh, let me say a couple things. We welcome recent progress in Yemen peace efforts, including the visit by Saudi and Omani delegations to Sana'a and the uh, Republic of Yemen's uh, public commitments to take additional steps to achieve peace. This progress follow more than a year of intensive UN-led diplomatic efforts, uh, efforts that are supported by the United States and regional partners like Saudi Arabia and Oman. We, of course, uh, are supporting these efforts, but they are UN-mediated ones, uh, which, as you know, Gita began in April of 2022, and this laid the foundation for renewed peace efforts while delivering tangible benefits to the population. Uh, the U.S., of course, is deeply engaged on this, and officials travel to the region frequently, but I just don't have any other specifics to offer on the process. Alex, go ahead. Thanks, Renan. Back to Russia and Ukraine. Sure. Can you give a reaction to the Kremlin's latest comments on Ukraine? Medvedev said over the weekend that Ukraine should be erased from the map. A country that chairs UN Security Council simply denies another country its existence. Do you have any reaction? Um, well, uh, Mr. Medvedev is wrong, uh, and you have seen um, the United States take uh, serious action over the past year and uh, even prior to that to support our Ukrainian partners to do everything we can um, to support them so that they can uh, defend themselves against Russia's aggression and defend their territorial integrity and sovereignty. Alex, at the crux of this is the rules of a rules-based international order and the foundations of the UN Charter. Uh, uh, the border of uh, one country uh, should not uh, be erased by, by pure aggression of another. And that is what Russia is trying to do. And so we will continue to support our Ukrainian partners uh, uh, and, and put them in the best position possible uh, for uh, uh, the negotiating table, should that come. And on the uh, Security Council, mm -hmm. 10 days in, uh, is it your take that Russia has been taking its chairmanship less seriously, to put it mildly? Well, uh, it's our hope for Russia to conduct itself professionally during its scheduled presidency uh, and for the Council to continue to do its important work on a number of issues of peace and security across the world. Uh, that said, we also expect and are fully preparing for Russia to continue to use its seat on the Council to spread disinformation and to try and distract from or justify its egregious actions in Ukraine. Um, and so we're going to continue to take uh, close attention, uh, and we will uh, take appropriate steps as needed. Is Secretary Pan to attend a formal meeting uh, end of this month? I don't have any uh, travel to uh, announce or preview, Alex. Go ahead. Yep. Super quick question. Uh, so that Tunisia is planning to join BRICS. Any comment on that? Uh, these are sovereign decisions for uh, for countries uh, to make. I don't have anything to offer from up here. Go ahead. Uh, my second question is that uh, U.S. Uh, Assistant Secretary for uh, South and Central Asian Affairs, Donald Lu, in his visit uh, in in Bangladesh in uh, January, he said that the uh, Rapid Action Battalion RAP has made uh, tremendous progress in performing its duties while respecting human rights. So, considering this, whether the U.S. is uh, uh, thinking to withdraw its sanction on RAP. 
Uh, again, I'm just not going to uh, preview or get into the specifics of any actions or designations that we um, uh, have taken from up here. Uh, uh, what I will say broadly is that the U.S. looks forward to deepening our engagement with Bangladesh over the next 50 years and beyond, and our cooperation on a number of issues like climate change, development, trade, economic uh, humanitarian assistance, and security shows the range of our strong partnership and future potential. All right. Thanks, everybody.